God is good all the time. And I've seen how God has worked in His place. Amen. Do you feel that God is in His place? This day, this almost the last day, that our hearts should be long for God. Amen. And thirsting for God. Before I start, let me just tell you my message is about the Holy Spirit. And I pray that you would pray as I speak, that you would understand everything. Amen. And not only cognitively, I want you to understand it within your heart. That this is for us, this is for all of us. But it's all about our hands. Gracious Father, loving God, who has appointed us to be born in this generation, who believes that in this generation we are going to use, Heavenly Father, young people to finish the work of the gospel. But we cannot do this, Heavenly Father, without, without the Holy Spirit. Unless we appreciate the Holy Spirit, unless we see our need of the Holy Spirit, we will not be in power. We will be destitute of the truth and the power to convert souls. Today, Lord, please help your servant as I speak. As I express my gratitude to you for calling me and sending the Holy Spirit so that I could be used for the mighty work that you have entrusted to me. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for such an opportunity that I could speak again once more today to move the hearts of these young people through the power of the Holy Spirit. Help us, Lord, to remember your promise. Help us, Lord, to appreciate your promise and to know what to do with these promises. In Christ, we will be in prayer. Amen. Let me give you a brief background of myself. I was born, I was born in Montelupa, outside, until six years old. I was brought up in Mindanao as a Catholic by my parents. But uh, never did I know that my father was a Seventh-day Adventist. Perhaps he was not baptized. I don't know if he was baptized. But he went out of the house, of their house, at 14 years old. So you can just imagine uh, the kind of a parents that I had. I mean, I was not brought up. I was brought up as a pure, hard, die-hard Catholic. Um, I used to be serving in the church as a choir member. I was also very active in the Legion of Mary. You can just imagine Legion of Mary going from house to house carrying the, the image of Mary and praying from house to house. And prayer was our key. And I was also very active in the in Columbian Square. Have you heard of it? It's our junior Knights of Columbus. So I am very much trained in this kind of religious service. But while I was very active in religiosity, I was also rotten and rotten inside me. I was seeking for more. But you know, the more I strive, it's like a sinking sand. The more I strive to go up, the more I go down. I was very boastful and proud of myself. During my high school years, I would not go to, I would go to school without a notebook. And I was thinking, I'm the brightest child here. I'm the brightest child without an honor. All shame. Until I come to my senses because one of the one of the choir director, the choir director was so concerned about our soul, he, she started to sing a song. It's entitled Kaya Munabang Magisa. There I was able to realize that I could not without my parents. And I could not without God. So I begin to commit myself verbally. So as soon as committed, I committed myself verbally as a young man. 
I found myself in trouble. Why? Because when you commit verbally and people would listen to it and heard about it, then they would account you. So, I was forced to change. The first thing I did was to really pray that God would change me because I could not. I was already entangled with pornography. I was entangled with vices, with sexual vices. I don't know how to come out of this, but I was praying that God would work through me. And during that time, I began to open the Bible. There was a little Bible called Gideon Bible. And during that time, I began to be watching televisions, religious televisions, Sunday and Saturday. Apollo Siki Bulo was one of my best preachers during that time when he did not profess it to be the quoted son of God. Iglesia Cristo was one of the things that I was hooked into when I began to know about Jesus. But this time I was reading my Bible, I was even memorizing the Bible. John 3.16. And during that time there were even Spanish words in the Gideon Bible. John 3.16 was worded, Forte de tal manera amo Dios al mundo que ha dado a su hijo de quien con la cifreta mas a tenga vida eterna. These were words, exact words, that I memorized within my heart. I began to share the Bible with my fellow Catholics, but there were more. I was searching for more, as if God wants me to learn more of Him. You know, the Bible says, you were searching the Scripture because you think that there is eternal life in it. But you are rejecting me. See, even if we search the scriptures, if we, if we reject Him, during that time I was searching the scriptures, but I was totally rejecting God because I still have the same vices that I have. I couldn't make a way out of it. I was praying to God, and sometimes during the Mahal na Araw, I would kneel down in prayer for like many days and fast many days and still couldn't find an answer to my prayer. When I went to Manila to study my political science, you know, I had a very simple um, dream in my life to become the president of the Republic of the Philippines. Very simple dream. And I'm determined to do it. You know, I was a skeptic before I became a Christian. I was skeptic. I do not believe that people exist or everything exists. The only thing that exists in the world is myself. And everything else is a product of my imagination. I was thinking of, I, I was reading things, like I believe that there is no God, that there are aliens that controls and manipulates the whole earth. And even the Bible accounts, I would rationalize it as, you know, alien accounts that were just playing with us, playing at us. And these things, you know, crowded my mind. I was even able to, to convince my fellow classmates, and they were very intelligent. But during that time when God was really working within my heart, it's like the Holy Spirit working within my heart, that I should be honest to myself. And I begin to really pray. I begin to really read my Bible. I begin to know Jesus Christ little by little. And during that time, God worked through me. I began to, to respect my parents, to do my house chores. I was very lazy. I would be at the television from, from the rising of the sun into the sunset. I was very disrespectful. Sometimes I would think to go out of the house. Sometimes I would think to kill myself. These are the common struggles of the young people. But I tell you, God worked through me and through the scripture. And during that time, you know, I began to, you know, rise up very early in the morning and pray. And plead that God would change me. And you know what? On my fourth year, I did not receive any honor. And I begin to realize that I'm missing many things. Like my mental is already stagnant. And I was boastful and proud. And you know what happened? At the very last end of the semester, I was able to get like, the third highest honor among the thousands. And how did I do that? God did it to me. And there I proved that I can do more if I am submitted to God. So when I went to, uh, when I went to Manila, there I studied political science. And when I was studying, I was still also seeking for God, for, for religion. And there I found Ignatian and Christian. For six months I was there, going to Ignatian and Christian, going through the doctrine again and again. And I was convicted that Ignatian and Christian was the only church 
that can save humankind. So I was preaching the English and English to doctrine, even when, you know, the saloon would, you know, cut my hair. I would tell them about, you know, if you don't become a English and English, you would not be saved. And I was convicted until God called me to Aurora province. And for a while, a layman was talking to me and said, I, I heard that you're an English and a Christian. And he began opening the scripture to me, telling that these are the doctrines of the English and a Christian. And out of respect, I listen. And whatever he tells me, it goes into my, it, it comes into my ears and goes out of another ear. It was nothing. But when the Sabbath topic was given, one text, Exodus chapter 20, verse 8. And on the afternoon of Friday, it was Leviticus 11. For three days, the Bible studied me, but only two texts retained in my mind. It was the Sabbath and the issues of food. That's why last year I was able to, uh, to really be convicted to write this in a pamphlet where Seth was doing now. The pamphlet on Sabbath and food because these are very powerful. Yes, Jesus Christ is telling the people that they are doing wrong. And that they are not submitted to God. There I submitted. On the fourth day I was baptized as a seventh day activist. On the seventh day after my baptism, I am being used already by God as a Sabbath school teacher. The seventh day after my baptism. Then I went to AUP and there God is using me, growing me. After a year and a half, God, you know, put me in a, in a direction that God will use me. I become the AY leader of the university. And I graduated. And after I graduated, I still am longing for something until God put me in Aurora and God, where I studied the spirit of prophecy. There I found new light. Ellen White became so clear to me that which I struggled to believe that Ellen White is a prophet, even if I am already graduated in the university. Life sketches was the key. I began to say that there is more message for me. So I began to read, and for three years I did not read any, any article or any book except the Bible and the Spirit of Prophecy. The Lord was telling me something, and I began to absorb everything. And that's my introduction. It was the Holy Spirit that I found to be very interesting in my study of the Spirit of Prophecy. What? It was the Holy Spirit. And let me lead you to the promises of Jesus Christ. Yesterday, I was telling about Jesus Christ and what he has done for us. But Jesus Christ is not here with us today. So what is the promise of Jesus Christ regarding the Holy Spirit? In John chapter 14. In John chapter 14. You know John chapter 14. Isn't it? You know John chapter 14. Let not your heart be troubled. Believe in God. You believe also in me. You believe also in me. In my father's house and many mansions, but we're not so. I will go back to the Father, the God will go back again and receive into my home. But what is going to happen in between? Amen. If I go back to the Father, what is going to happen in between? You'll be left alone, but not alone. Why? And he's telling now the promise of the Holy Spirit. He says in verse 3, I am the way, yes, I am the truth, I am the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. But the problem is, I'm going out. I'm coming to my Father, and you will be left alone, but not alone. He says in verse 13, most assuredly in verse 12, I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do. You believe that? He who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do. And greater works than this, he will do. Do you believe that greater works than what Jesus Christ has done during his lifetime, we can do? And he was talking to whom? He was talking to the disciples. And what are the age of these disciples? These are our age. We are not talking about old people who can do many things. These are our age. And there's greater things you can do. Because I go to my father. 
what is this? Greater things you can do because I go to my father. What is that sense? Ellen White was telling that unless it is expedient that Jesus Christ should go to the Father. Why? Because Jesus Christ's role is to intercede for us in behalf of us so that all our prayers will be answered. Amen? Now the question is, what kind of prayer should we pray for in order for us to do the greater things that we ought to do? Greater than Jesus Christ has done on this earth. Interesting enough, the Bible says in verse 13, And whatever you ask in my name, that I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. So whatever you ask in my name, that I will do, so that the Father will be glorified in my Son. Now, let me ask you a question. If you be given a chance, three prayers that would be answered, what would you pray for? Oh, education, master, doctoral, house, love, wife, husband, children, wealth. But Jesus Christ is talking about something here, very much beneficial, especially when he goes out. If the greatest person in the world is Jesus Christ, then you will look for him. And if we lose him, you will see the value. See, Jesus Christ was loved and loved by his disciples. But this time, he will go and go to the Father and plead with the Father who is going to remain here. What are we going to ask for? What is the greatest thing? Or should I say, who is the greatest thing we should ask for? And Jesus continued in verse 14. If Let me hold it. Jesus continued. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. And the context is in verse 15. If you love me, keep my commandments. Now let me tell you about the commandment of love. The last command Jesus has ever spoken was, Go ye therefore. Make disciples of all nations, kindreds, people, tongue. Baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And teaching them everything that I have commanded thee. Lord, I am with you always, even into the ends of the earth. Yes, Jesus Christ was telling us to love each other, to love God more than ourselves. But the last thing we would ever do if, I mean the first and the last thing we would ever do if we love God and if we love our fellow man is to go and preach the gospel. Amen. In Revelation chapter 14 there were three imperatives in the three angels message. First was to fear God. Second was to keep his commandment. And what? And glorify him. But this was part of the everlasting gospel that we need to preach in all the world. Amen. That we need to preach in all the world. But how can we do this? Let's proceed in verse 15. In verse 16, And I will pray the Father, and He will give you another helper, that He may abide with you forever. The word helper there is companion. It was first mentioned when Eve, when Adam was alone. And it is not good for a man to be alone. And what did God do? He made him a companion. So the Holy Spirit becomes the companion of everyone who longs for Jesus Christ. Who longs to do the work of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because we cannot do it. You know, one time the disciples were trying to cast the demons, and they they could not. They were casting demons, but this time they could, they could not. And Jesus Christ said, "Oh, this type of demon needs fasting, prayer, and more faith." But I would say, why would you fast? And why would you pray? And why would you need faith? Because you needed a greater power. 
and what your cells can do. And what is his greater power? A power that comes from God alone. And the dwelling of the Holy Spirit. He says, I will pray to the Father and he will give you another helper. And he may abide with you forever. The Spirit of truth. He calls the helper the Spirit of truth. So who will abide? The Spirit of truth. And notice this very carefully. Whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. The world does not see this. See, even the Seventh-day Adventist who is not converted does not see this spirit of truth. And then it says, because it never sees him nor knows him, but you know him because he dwells with you and will be in you. Now, let me ask an English question. What is the difference between with you and in you? Sa Tagalog ng with you, sa Tagalog ng in you, nasa loob. Now let's go back to the disciples in in Acts. Chapter 19. Acts chapter 19 verse 2 it says, He said to them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? So they said to him, We have not so much heard whether there is a Holy Spirit. Did you receive the Holy Spirit? Oh, what? The Holy Spirit? We have not so much heard about the Holy Spirit. Can you tell us about the Holy Spirit? So Paul asked, So after what then were you baptized? So you were baptized. Then what then you were baptized? And he said, Oh, baptized? Into John's baptism. Then who baptized you? He said, Oh, uh, me, I, got, I was baptized as Pastor Sato. But during that baptism, I didn't know about the Holy Spirit. I know that it's just a power, it's just it's somebody, but I, I, I didn't know that there's a relationship between me and the Holy Spirit. I know it's an active working in salvation, but Holy Spirit, what does it have to do with me? So John was saying, Paul was saying, John, John indeed baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying to the people that they should believe on him who would come after him. That is on Christ. See, John's baptism is a way, but not the gate. See, if you were baptized by, by a pastor, it's just a way for you to what to believe in Jesus. But he but there is a much more baptism that we needed. It's not just water. It's not just swimming. Amen? So what does it mean by baptism of water? In Matthew chapter 3 verse 11. Matthew chapter 3 verse 16. Uh, verse 11 it says, I indeed baptize you. And this was the testimony of John. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. So what was the what was the purpose of baptism in water? Repentance. Repentance is metanoia. To change your mind from doing this to going here. From Satan to God. From sin to righteousness. So baptism is just baptism into repentance. So repentance prepares you to, to come to Christ. But he who is coming after me is mightier than I whose sandals I am not worthy to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. Now let me tell you about this. See, you were baptized by your pastor so that you could be led to Jesus Christ. But what is the most important is the baptism of this man whose sandals I am not worthy to untie. You know, when John has been done with his work, he says, I must decrease. He must increase. Why? Because if we know Jesus Christ, he will baptize us with a greater baptism. And what was that baptism? Baptism of the Holy Spirit and of fire.
baptism of the Holy Spirit and a fire. You know, Moses was looking at the bush and it was flaming with fire but cannot consume the bush. And he was there looking at Moses, looking at the, the uh, at God, Jehovah. And he could not so much, you know, think about how this bush would not be consumed. This fire that the Lord is preparing for us is more than what we can think or imagine. And let's talk about the Holy Spirit first before we talk about fire. Because without the Holy Spirit, we can be consumed by fire. Amen? Amen. But with the Holy Spirit, the only thing that can be consumed is our own sins, inconsistencies, weaknesses. See, what is this Holy Spirit that we are talking about? Now let's go back to what the Holy Spirit can do and why Christ wanted us to accept the Holy Spirit and why it is expedient or necessary for Him to go to the Father. You know, when He was resurrected after, like, after 40 days, He went to the Father. And when He went to the Father, He presented what? The resurrected. And when He presented the resurrected, the first fruits, the Father agreed. And for that time, he started to pour out and command the Holy Spirit to go down. And during that time, 10 days of prayer what, was devoted by the disciples. And they were praying for what? Praying for the promised Holy Spirit. According to Acts chapter 1 verse 8, it was promised by Jesus Christ before he left. He said, it is not for you to know the times and seasons for which the Father has put in His own authority, but you shall receive the power from the Holy Spirit when the Holy Spirit has come to you, and you shall be my witnesses to me in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. So Jesus Christ going to the Father has a purpose. And what was the purpose? So that He could send the Holy Spirit to come. See, Jesus Christ has only stayed three and a half years with his disciples, right? And the three and a half years, they were so intimate with each other, so that when Jesus Christ went out, what did the disciples feel about it? They were so sad. Sorrow was in their hearts, so that for ten days, until they get again the same spirit that they have when Jesus Christ was there, they would not go out because they don't have strength to do it. How many of you would go out for an outreach without the Spirit of God? Without being inspired, without being moved by God. And you were just drugging yourself, you know, doing outreach. We need to do outreach, you know. We are Seventh-day Adventists and we are the Advent message. And how do we finish the Word of God? And we were like, what, drugging ourselves every time. Even to go to the Sabbath. We would think, ah, oh, would I go to the Sabbath school now? And Satan would say, you know, I have another suggestion. And Jesus promised that the Holy Spirit is coming. We should not be satisfied with just what we do. We should be what longing for this Holy Spirit. In verse 16, in, 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 in verse 14, verse 20, uh, 15, verse 26. Please open your Bibles with me. It says, But when the Helper comes, whom I shall send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth, who proceeds from the Father, who proceeds from the Father, meaning... By asking the Father to send the Holy Spirit. The church was asking for the Holy Spirit. Jesus was interceding for, so that the Holy Spirit could come. And for 10 days, it took them 10 days to pray for the Holy Spirit. Then the Father sent the Holy Spirit here. And what was the main purpose of sending? Listen very carefully. He will testify of me. I was telling you that scribes and Pharisees were reading the Bible, isn't it? And Jesus Christ was telling them, you were searching for the scriptures. You were trying to find eternal life. But they do, but these words supposed to be testified of me, but you would not receive me. You might be reading the Bible. You might be memorizing all the doctrines of the Seventh-day Adventists. You might be knowing all the texts from the Bible, but without receiving the power of the Holy Spirit. You cannot testify. You will be timid in testifying of Jesus Christ. 
It is the power of the Holy Spirit that gives us power to testify of the Lord Jesus. Amen? Amen. Pastor, I do not know how to testify. I do not know what to say. And oftentimes, I would hear young people asking me, Pastor, what would I do when I go to outreach? What would I say? And I said to them, you do not need to know what to say. You need to ask for the Holy Spirit. Because when the Holy Spirit comes, He will testify of Jesus Christ. Amen? So our greatest need today is not eloquence. Our greatest need today is not what? It's not knowledge. It's not expertise. Our greatest need today is to accept, believe the Holy Spirit that it would dwell within our hearts, that God Himself would dwell in our earthly, earthen vessel. Amen? Amen. Earthly, earthen vessel. And let's go back to John chapter 15, verse 26. says, He will testify of me. And what does the Holy Spirit do? Outside of testifying. I mean, what are the additional things that He could do? In verse 7 of 16, chapter 16, verse 7 says, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. It is to what? Advantage. Our advantage that Jesus went away. Why? Because Jesus can only talk to few people. Like 12 or a thousand, but he could not go anywhere else in the world. Amen? He would be just there. In fact, he was just confined in Israel. But when the Holy Spirit comes, he goes to all people at the same time. Amen? And he performs everything that Jesus performed in simultaneously with all people. So it is really necessary that he would send the Holy Spirit. He said, and if I go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. And when he has come, he will convict the world of sin. So how do you know that the Holy Spirit is there? When you are convicted. Do you feel the convicting power of the Holy Spirit telling you your sins? And sometimes you are denying it, but the power was always there. You can almost not sleep during the night just being convicted of what? By the Holy Spirit. You cannot eat. You cannot even talk to, to God sometimes because of this conviction. But He does not only convict us of our sin. He says He convicts us of righteousness. He tells us that there is hope for us. There is righteousness in Jesus Christ by faith. Amen? Amen. He does not leave us to be convicted only of our own sins. He is convicting us that Jesus is our righteousness and of judgment. And He tells us that what? That in the coming judgment, if you are in the sight of God, you are saved. But if you are not in the sight of God, you are condemned. In Romans chapter 8 verse 1 says, that we are not condemned when we are in Christ. Amen. Why? Because what we cannot do in our flesh, according to the law, Jesus, by dying on the cross in the flesh, He crucified the flesh for us because we could not otherwise do it. Amen. We could not do it by our own selves. Today, the Lord is giving us His chance to accept the Holy Spirit. And what does the Holy Spirit do to us when we accept it? In Ezekiel chapter 36, and notice this very carefully. Ezekiel chapter 36, verse 25 to 27. And I like this very care, very nice, very nice words. 25, it says, Then I will sprinkle clean water on you, and you shall be clean. I will cleanse you from all your filthiness and from all your idols. Just as He promised that if you confess your sins, He is faithful and just to forgive you of all your sins and cleanse you from all righteousness. But He does not only cleanse us, He promises us better than this. And what is better than this? In verse 27, in verse 26, I will give you a new heart. Amen? Just like David saying, creating me a new heart of God and renew a steadfast spirit within me. We need heart transplant. We, need, we do not need heart renovation. We need a heart transplant. 
He says, I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you. I remember the first president of PYC was Ivan Del Rimokal. The same exact text that I use today were the same exact text I was using that night on a solemn night, 9 o'clock to 12 o'clock, when I was appealing for this voice of youth to receive the Holy Spirit before they go. And Ivan just what? Took a stone and banged the stone over the church roof. And was, we were shocked. What was that? And I was like asking Ivan, what was that, Ivan? And then he said, oh, no, nothing. There were just, you know, people, you know, playing with the church. And I said, don't worry about it. The enemy is just actively working. And then he began to think about the enemy is actively working. And during that time, he was in Apo, Alpha B Omega, and he was my cousin. He was doing what? doing all this stuff. And he was very angry because he has to attend the rock music over SM. And he could not attend because we were not yet, what, finished with our Bible study. And during that time, at 12 o'clock, I appealed that why don't you all ask the Holy Spirit to be with you? At that solemn night, he tried. He was thinking, why, is, why are, am I so cruel with these people who have been so good to me? So he tried. He just tried to accept the Holy Spirit the following morning. And during that night, we were not able to sleep because the night after that, Ivan was saying, and it was about 11 o'clock, he was saying, Kuya Brian, I feel that I have been called by the Holy Spirit to be a pastor. I couldn't believe, you know. He's just fooling me. He's making fun of me. But we talked until 5 o'clock in the morning. And the spirit that I felt in him was the spirit that I felt within myself. It has unity in it. Amen? The Holy Spirit was working. And until now, we work together in saving more young people in the Philippines and all throughout the world. Amen? This could happen to us if we believe, if we only believe. It says, I will give you a new heart, put a new spirit within you. I will take the heart of stone out of your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. I will put my spirit, these are all capital letters, I will put my spirit within you. Where? I will put my spirit within you. I will take the heart of... Uh, my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes. The problem is many Seventh-day Adventists are dragging themselves, complying to how they can obey God without the Spirit. Alam nyo, kapag ginagawa nyo isang bagay na wala ng Spirit ko, hirap na hirap eh. Tama ka And you're going to the Sabbath and you're not very happy. And you're doing the ministry and you're just what? Burdened in doing it. Why? It is the absence of the Holy Spirit. You are destitute of this power. And today I am making an appeal for you to accept this. It says, and you will keep my judgment and do them. If you are following the law of God without the Spirit, I tell you, you are crucifying yourself. You are you're making it hard for yourself to obey God. Without the Spirit, you cannot obey God. It would be difficult. Para kayo man, kinukontra niyo yung araw. Kinukontra niyo yung araw. Ginagawa niyo isang bagay na totally against yourself. But because you are of the flesh, of the flesh you cannot do anything. But of the spirit, everything is possible. Amen? Today, as you go for missionary work, do not do this out of compliance. Do this by the spirit of God. Amen? By the spirit of God. As I end, I would like to quote one of my favorite quotations from Ellen White in Christ's object lesson. In Christ's object lesson, I'd like to pinpoint to you some of the greatest um, quotations I want you. She said, before he left his disciples, Christ breathed on them and said unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. We needed the breath that comes from God. Amen. So before, before he sent them, God breathed on them the Holy Spirit. 
Amen. You want to receive this breath? Amen. You want to receive this breath? What else is Ellen White saying? What else did Ellen White say? Listen. Behold, I send you the promise of my Father upon you. Luke chapter 24, verse 14. And you know Joel. He says, I will give my spirit upon all flesh and make them what? The young people will see visions. All people will dream dreams. And I like this. The promise of the Holy Spirit is not appreciated as it should be. Do you talk about the Holy Spirit wherever you go? You speak of Him, you think of Him. It is not appreciated as it should be. Its fulfillment is not realized as it might be. Its fulfillment is not realized as it might be. You know, you, Ellen White says you already have the Holy Spirit, but you have not appreciated it. You have not believed it. That's why it does not work as it might be. It is the absence of the Holy Spirit that makes the gospel ministry so powerless. Nagbabible study pa kayo? Para pag Bible study niyo, tapos nabaptize siya. Pagkatapos niya mabaptize, makikita niyo walang pagbabago sa iba. Ang dami niyo na nabaptize, kung nang backslide lahat. Now you have to ask yourself, have you appreciated the Holy Spirit? Have you taught them about the Holy Spirit? Have you encouraged them? Have you talked about them? Have you really believed the Holy Spirit, convicted. If you're convicted by the Holy Spirit, I tell you, you can change the world. It was the conviction, it was the belief, it was the appreciation of the Holy Spirit that changes the young people. It is not, it is not eloquence. It is not learning, talents, eloquence, every natural or acquired endowment may be possessed. You may have all the things you needed, talents, endowments, Learning, education. You may possess this, but without the presence of the Spirit of God, no heart will be touched. Yes, you might have all the texts you needed. You might have all the Spirit of prophecy quotations you needed. But without the Spirit of God, no one will be touched. No one will be touched. No one will be converted. No one will be revived. It is the spirit that revives the soul. It says, and I continue. On the other hand, and no sinner will be one to Christ. On the other hand, if they are connected with Christ, if the gifts of the spirit are theirs, even the poorest and the most ignorant of his disciples will have the power that will tell upon hearts. Even if you have not studied at AUB or MVC, or ever, even if you've not studied in Adventist elementary school or Adventist school, even if you only have a little education, if you have the spirit, you have the power to touch hearts. Today, you are going up. And maybe you're thinking, I'm not equipped. I do not know what to say. But it is not equipment that you, know, that you need. It is the Holy Spirit. The moving of the Holy Spirit that we need today. And let me continue. He says, God makes them the channel of the outpouring of the highest influence in the universe. And we have not employed this. By the way, we should not use the Holy Spirit. We should be used by the Holy Spirit. Today, I would like to ask you a question. Do you believe that the God in heaven, the Holy Spirit, could literally dwell in you if you ask Him to believe it. Now, second, if it is yes, and you believe it, but today you will have the Holy Spirit, what are you going to do with it? You know, one requirement in receiving the Holy Spirit is this. 
if you are willing to impart and testify about Christ. If you are not willing to impart and testify about Christ, you do not need the Holy Spirit. Pag binigyan ka ng tatay mo ng 100, tas ang nagastos mo lang 2 pesos, ihingi ka ba ng 1 million? The Father would not give you 1 million if even by 100 you have not used it. How many of us has been asking for the Holy Spirit but is not utilizing its power? And still asking for more. Why do we need the Holy Spirit if we're not going to share? Today, the longing heart to share is the key to receiving more power. Just like the muscles, the more you use it, the more it becomes strong. The less you use it, then it will quit its own work. Would you like to accept the Holy Spirit today and believe that He would use you powerfully in saving souls and loving others? If this is your commitment, would you like to receive the Holy Spirit by simply manifesting it by going, coming up here so that I can pray for you, that you might receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit and the Father? Amen. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Oh, Holy Spirit, God, these are your people. These are your young people. This is, has been, for many, many years, thousands of years, you have been longing to possess them. Today, as we begin to pray, we would like you to put the words in their mouth, in their hearts, as we pray. Let us kneel. O oh, Divine God, the Holy Spirit, forgive us for many times you have appealed and continue to appeal that we would receive you. Many times the church has been speaking about you but we don't even dare to deeply understand it. But today, you have given us a chance to hear and understand that the only thing missing is that you do not dwell in our hearts. So that our efforts count to nothing. And even if our efforts are done with all our best, we lose Heavenly Father's souls because we do not appreciate the presence of the Holy Spirit. Today I pray for these young people. If they lack faith and belief, give them if they lack experience, give it to them, Heavenly Father, Heavenly God, O oh Holy Spirit. If they lack your presence, Lord, tell them. Tell us, continually convict us, continually manifest yourself in us that you are there to help us and that we could always ask and it shall always be given because you are already there within our hearts. This morning, Heavenly Father, these young people wanted to be used for the work. And yet, again and again, they would think that they cannot do the work because they are young. Let, not, let them not despise, be despised by others by thinking that they are young. Because the Holy Spirit is not young in this work. And I pray, Lord, for, the, for your offering. Possess each and every one of us. Help us to understand that you are willing to work if we are willing to submit and to be used by you. Help us, Lord, not to use you for aggrandizement. Help us, Lord, not to manipulate your words and manipulate your will and your power. Help us, Lord, to be controlled by you, by thoughts, by reason, by heart, by feelings, and by doings. Today, You are the God that worketh in us both to our will and to do your good pleasure. I pray that you will work 
in their bodies, in our bodies. Our hands would touch the things we wanted to touch. Our, our mouth would speak according to what you want us to speak. Our thoughts would think captive to the obedience of Christ. Today we claim that promise. And we thank you that we could always have the promise because Jesus Christ is interceding before us in heaven. And we could always receive this power abundantly more than what we could ever ask or imagine. And we thank you, Heavenly Father, that you have called us and you will continue to call other more young people to finish the work of the gospel, that they can do much more things that they are doing today and even what Jesus Christ has done in the, in the past. Because you are calling us, Heavenly Father, for active service, not sitting, not thinking, not longing, but doing the work of God. Send them, Heavenly Father. Send them with power. And send them to the, all the corners of Biko. Baptizing people. Converting people. And leading people to Jesus Christ in the power of the Holy Spirit. I claim and I thank you for this baptism that we are about to receive. And we have received through faith. All of this, Lord, we ask in the loving and sweet name. In the powerful name of our Lord Savior Jesus Christ. Let everyone say Amen. 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 God bless you. God bless you.